the Snack Down, largely used to illustrate more and safer space we could give to pedestrians or bicyclists. I'm going to take a different approach. Fiscal conservatism and economic development. I'm at a collector collector intersection, and here's the Snack Down and where it starts. So when I start stepping this off, I go about 40 paces. That's 120 feet to the apex of the turn, here to the curb ramp. And if I pace this out to here, this is almost 10 paces or almost 30 feet. So imagine if we had narrower street design standards, all this square footage, all this square footage in a subdivision has to be built, it's road base, it's asphalt, it has to be maintained in perpetuity, the storm drain system has to account for all of this additional asphalt that's not needed. An overlay has to overlay this many more square feet within an intersection. If you do chip seals, that's more. If we were to eliminate two of these at this T intersection, this side of the street and that side of the street, I don't know, combined with one more intersection, that's another buildable lot for the developer. Take a large subdivision like this one, maybe there's five or six of these. Imagine a developer getting five or six extra lots instead of having to devote this to excessive turn radius at a collector-collector intersection. That's more property taxes for a city. That's more land that can be developed. That's economic development, and it reduces the cost of government. Why would you want the government to pay for 30% more of an intersection than is absolutely necessary? That's a burden we can't handle. We're all saying we're out of money. So let's narrow some roads. The snow shows it. It's less government if we narrow the roads. And it's more property taxes because we have more land devoted to private space rather than unnecessary and wasted public space.